want to first start off with a disclaimer. I came out to my parents and didn't even know I came out. <laughs> Seriously, I'm from the Caribbean. I'm from Trinidad. So, <laughs> Trinidad via Venezuela. And I got parents of some very hot cultures, <laughs> right? My mom is Trinidadian, my dad is Venezuelan. So I lived in both islands for a period of my time because my parents were separated. You know, at a very young age, they were separated for whatever that reason. But I want you all to picture a 13-year-old girl coming home one day from, I was in high school at the age of 13. And my teacher, what happened, because I lived so close to where the school was, if I did as much as, I mean, <laughs> just sneezed, the teacher will know, I'm gonna call your mother, because my mom was a true West Indian woman. She would have the hair tied up, and she was always at home doing laundry. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, whatever that was for. So, you know, we have in, in Trinidad, our school setting, it's, you know, it's pretty much, you know, it's, we have our locker area, you know, the locker areas are there, right? And then, you know, the, the classes, you know, where our classrooms were, you know, was nice and lit up and bright and it's in another area of the school. So normally, you know, who hangs out in the locker area was the kids in there who got themselves in trouble. But what was Michelle doing in the locker area? Michelle was kissing the girls. Yes, she was. <laughs> and, yes, that's what Michelle did in the locker area. So my math teacher, this was coming down to the last week of school, she decides she's going to come and check the locker area for all who is cut in class. And who did she find in the locker area? Michelle kissing a girl. She didn't just find Michelle in the locker area. Michelle was in there smooching with a girl. So I remember my teacher, I'm seriously, Miss Phillips was her name. And Miss Phillips, she said, she stood there for like a good five minutes. And she walked. Oh. And I'm telling, you know, the girl, her name was Allison. I was like, yeah, let's do it some more. Let's give her a real show, you know? <laughs> and we did. So when she finally had enough, Miss Phillips finally came over and she tapped me. She said, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm giving you all in my West Indian dialect. I'm going and call your mother right now because this one is new. She said, this is new. <laughs> she calls my mother. Now here is the West Indian woman. She comes in, she was doing laundry. <laughs> and Jemima hair tie on the head, right? <laughs> I mean, flip-flops, we wear flip-flops, and she comes into school in that same attire. Miss Michelle, and she's calling me out. She's calling me out. Miss Michelle, yes, you little wretch. I'm like, little wretch, what is going on? The teacher really called my mom. My mom comes, now we're in the principal office, because this is now, you know, they've taken it out of the locker area. This was new for them. They have never seen two girls kiss, you know. You all remember, you all know that song, I kissed the girl and I liked it. That was a hit with me and I didn't even know it was a hit. Katy Perry, was that Katie? Who say that? It was. So my mom comes in now, we're in the principal office and here she is, you know, in her little attire. She said, Michelle, the teacher just called me and told me you was caught in the locker area. Michelle, did I hear right? You was kissing a girl? This is Michelle now, because I was very rebellious. I kissed her, and I like it, and I'm gonna kiss her again. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, what did my mother do? She said, oh Lord, I gotta take you to the priest now, because somebody threw Obia in my house and you got it. That's what they call, they, do not, they don't say voodoo in Trinidad, we say obia. So she just knew that someone, you know, threw obia, because that's how we say it in Trinidad, somebody threw obia in my house and you caught it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, every Friday, 
until I was 16 years old, right? I had to be taken. I was taken to this. He claimed he was an exorcist. <laughs> and when I got older, then I knew what it was that he was mixing. This man used to mix castor oil. Okay, we have, yes, darling, that's what he did to me in Trinidad. He mixed castor oil. There was something we have also too called Angostura bitters, right? All the things that have that taste. And he would mix this concussion and he gave it to me to drink. And then, you know, when, when I drank this, he will then stick his hand on my throat and said, I gotta get the demons out. I gotta get the demons out. This child is possessed. Now, if you do that to a child from the age of six, 13 until they're 16, I'm going to be throwing up. I'm throwing up. So every time I would start, I would gag and I'm throwing up. He said, the demon's coming out. Everybody move. The demon's coming out. The man did this to me. So finally, you know, my aunt came down to Trinidad for carnival. Because people, you all got to go to Trinidad for carnival. It's lovely. It's lovely. Okay? We are liberated now. So trust me, honey. We have our, our times. So... My aunt comes down to Trinidad for carnival. And you know, she's getting ready. She had a wonderful carnival. We all had a wonderful carnival. And sure enough, my mom says to her, I need to let you know something. When you are leaving, you are taking this one with you. She said to my aunt, the things that she's carrying on with, she says, I cannot handle this in the house. My dad, if you notice, I haven't mentioned my dad along all this time. One of the most peaceful, quiet, humble men. And all he would say to me, I did no wrong for my dad. All he would say to me, Nena, you happy? That's all he would ask me. Yes, papi, I'm happy every time I kiss the girls, but mommy don't want me to kiss the girls. <laughs> you know, and, and he kept it at that. That was his words. It was not until, you know, my mom eventually sent me to the United States with my aunt. Fast forward, I came to the United States to live at the age of 16. Fast forward, at age 24, I'm diagnosed HIV positive. I just had a baby, and this baby also too, she also too was diagnosed HIV positive. And it was not until I had my daughter. My daughter was, I think, a year and a half old, and we had a family reunion out in Willenboro at my aunt's house. This is a town outside of Trenton in New Jersey. And the family got together. My aunt said to me, well, you know, bring your boyfriend. So I brought my boyfriend, Peggy, <laughs> right? So Peggy came, and this is my mom. She said, you had to do it. You had to do it. You're going to kill your father. Your father have dealt with this all these years. Now we have to deal with you being HIV positive, but Michelle, my God, why would you bring this woman here? And this is my father. And that's what I think for me, nothing, that's what just made me, you know what? I'm going to live, I'm going to live my life. He looked at my mom and he said, enough of this. She's a grown woman because Peggy was there. And my mom looked at me and she said, you know, it's a family reunion. Why are you... Why is this woman here? I said, she's here because this is who I love, and this is not about a kiss anymore, mommy. This is my life. <laughs> my dad, my dad looked at me. The, that cute little Venezuelan man looked at me because he always, I was his muñaca. This is a doll in Spanish, right? He looked at me and he said, Nena, are you happy? What was his words? He said, Nina, you happy? I said, Papi, I am happy. He said, that's all Papi wants for you. That was it. That was my coming out. <laughs> you know, my dad was the person, really, that, you know, gave me, you know, that acceptance. And I think at me being an adult at that age then realized, you know what, it's okay. This is my life. You know, I'm going to live my life. Yes, I was newly diagnosed. as um, It's been 27 years, so now I'm a grandmother. I just got to say, my daughter, she was a perinatally infected child, 
And that grandson that we have, his name is Royal because this is royalty in our family. He's negative. You know what I'm saying? He's negative. <laughs> you know, so I've celebrated, you know, I celebrate my life. I love my life. I would say in the LGBT community, um, I do identify as bisexual. I do. You know, because I'm a person, I got to say, I love people. Thank you. I love people. One last, one last piece. I really, really do. I have my, what I say, my gals here with me. We are from Caribbean American Pride, and Jordan is going to be doing a lot of things with us. <laughs> so I really want to thank you all for having us here tonight. Thank you.